Hello, hello, and welcome to a new episode of Rambling from Two Meddling Kids. I'm Edward Hunt, joined with my co-mermaid. Oh, come on. <laughs> come on, co-mermaid. Darius the mermaid? <laughs> Mike <laughs> Cunningham on land? <laughs> And we are the Meddling Kids, and today we'll be reviewing Actually, the no, Little I'm Mermaid. Lamont the Mermaid, Lamont. Lamont the Mermaid. Oh, <laughs> fancy. Okay. I'm just going to keep my regular name, Edward the Mermaid, because the Merman, I'd really prefer. Merman! <laughs> Merman! <laughs> <laughs> but yes, we will be reviewing The Little Mermaid. So welcome to <laughs> Ramblings from Two Meddling Kids, where we like to review movies and then other, do other random things. But... We'll be reviewing. For those of you joining us for the first time, don't worry, we won't spoil this uh, classic, famous Disney movie. <laughs> <laughs> this 40 year old. This 40 year old movie that literally I think everyone on the planet has seen, at least the original. We won't spoil anything in the first five to ten minutes um, while we give a spoiler free review. And then we'll give background and then finally finish with an actual play by play where we go through the movie and what our thoughts were while things were happening. Um, but again, we won't spoil anything for the first 10 minutes. <laughs> so let's start with our spoiler for review. Mike, are you ready, sir? I am. All right, what'd you give it? Let Zero me, to let five. Let me check Lamont's ready. Yeah, Lamont. <laughs> Lamont? <laughs> you can't talk on, on the land. Oh, fair. Glub, glub. Glub, glub, glub. glub, glub. Um, <laughs> I'm going to give uh, The Little Mermaid 2023 live action a three out of five. Okay. Um, I think there was a lot of bullshit hype around it with mm -hmm. the... Um, the race swapping and like possible like changes in the lyrics and stuff like that, but like outside mm. of all that mm -hmm. controversy, if you will, it was a good film. Yeah. Like I think it it sits where most of the Disney live actions rank for me. It was just like where they they're just fine. You okay. know what I'm saying? Like they don't really add much to the mm. to what is, you know, the greatness of a Disney, you know, classic. But they don't really rob it of anything. If anything it robs it of the some of the magic that mm -hmm. um, animation um, can add to a film, but it was it was just fine. I think yeah. um, I was excited to see uh, what's her name, uh, Melissa McCarthy mm -hmm. as um, Ursula, because she's I mean since Bride Bridesmaid, she's been one of my just one of my favorite yeah. uh, comedians, one of my favorite actresses. I think Holly Bailey did fine. Yeah, like I I think this well, this is her first um, lead act lead lead role. I think so. I have no idea. Yeah, yeah. She's. I mean, she's done like Grownish, um, mm -hmm. like a, the Kenya Barris uh, TV show, but this is her first lead role, and it was like it, it was it was fine. I think there mm -hmm. were certain parts where I kind of wished like she was quite possibly a little bit better at acting, mm -hmm. um, right. especially with the like having to lose your voice, right? Mm -hmm. And that means that. You have to emote act, and, yeah. and 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 I don't think she was able to really at times because you know she smiling here or like kind of you know doing things non verbally, um, but I, once again that, that's, that's still she's young early in her career she's sure. definitely something that she can work on and grow, um, yeah so the performances were were fine, um, but like I said it, it's kind of like right down the middle I mm -hmm. think some of the some of the um, CGI scenes with the underwater were cool, but mm -hmm. I think oftentimes with the, the CGI underwater, it was just like for a movie that cost as much as it did, mm -hmm. that CGI was lacking, like, yeah, CGI which was... doesn't make any sense Yeah, uh, because it was $250 million. Like, that's more than the original made in its full theater. Yeah. Well, they need uh, James Cameron. All right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what, yeah exactly. Yeah. It's interesting. Like, this is the one of the, the third movies in the past year mm -hmm. that has had a setting underwater, and yep. that being Avatar, Way of Water, Black Panther, mm -hmm. uh, sorry, Wakanda Forever, and then this one. Yeah. And then even a few years back with Aquaman, like, mm -hmm. it's, it's interesting to me, it was like, Scenes underwater are so bad to me because it's it's hard to be serious when you can't stay still and it, like you yeah or you're just kind of you're literally rude. dancing yeah. and, but it was like like you said James Cameron did it very well mm -hmm. um, I think this was better than uh, Wakanda Forever when with this underwater scene okay because yeah. that one was like very dark mm -hmm. and like very once again very weird for them to be underwater so this one was okay. But it was like that. That CGI was uh, kind of really bad. Um, there were some in, bad examples of CGI in, in, sure. uh, in certain scenes. Um, I know there was a lot of um, issues with how some of the animated characters would look. Uh, with sorry, Fair. some of the uh, the uh, aquatic characters would look with as your flounders, your uh, mm -hmm. what's his name, Sebastian. Sebastian. But yeah. Sebastian wasn't bad. I think people were just more mad at the fact that. Uh, 
they called him Sebastian the Crab in the original, but he did. He looked like a lobster. Fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair, fair. <laughs> so yeah. it's like, oh, now we being, you know, historically accurate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like a crab now. I was like, okay, yeah. But fine. it was like, so that the the crab didn't bother me as much, but flounder definitely was like nightmare fuel at times. <laughs> I don't care how cute you made his voice sound. Yeah. You're making, <laughs> you're making, yeah. <laughs> you're making him accurate to how his uh, species looked. It, it wasn't. It wasn't great, but it was. Yeah, it was just a, a fine movie. I think, like I said, I think animation. There, it's limitless to what you can do, which is crazy because for CGI and VFX mm-hmm. should have the same actual effect. Yeah, it just never really does. Well, I think it's. I think it's hard because if you have like real people and CGI, that's where you get that weird. Like, <sighs> Roger Rabbit did it just fine. They did. Thirty years ago. That's baby. true. That's true. <laughs> Very different kind of animation, but yes, that was. Yeah, fair, fair. But yeah. <laughs> So three out of five. Three out of five. Okay. You know, I feel like fucking Transformers does it fine. Yeah, but I still think it's like slightly different. I don't really know. I'm yeah, just I... talking shit. But yeah, it, yeah the movie. No, the movie itself was fine. It didn't really deviate from the original story, mm-hmm. which no. was cool. I mean, it made a few changes because obviously there's been issues with um, certain. Um, I think certain messages from the original. So I think they they changed those, and it really didn't affect the overall story, which was mm-hmm. fine. Um, but yeah. Just three out of five. Yeah. I'd, I'd be curious to see how, because I, I, as we were there watching it, I know there was a few people going to see it in 3D, so I'm curious how that... Yeah, or like the 4DX Yeah, stuff. it was yeah. 4D, sorry. Yeah. yeah. I'm curious how that experience would have been. Um, I bet you get hit in the face with water. <laughs> and, <laughs> and you kind of go Just around. Just like, all right, Ariel, yeah, I'm, like, I'm right here. Yeah. <laughs> Fair. So, yeah, so it's hard with like a movie like this, because if this was the first iteration of The Little Mermaid... I'd give it like a four. Yeah, right. Like, but that's the thing. It's this is a movie that's been told before, and it's a story that's been told before. Um, question, Mike. When was the last time you saw The Little Mermaid? Uh, the year was nineteen ninety six. Okay, so a long time. Ago. <laughs> a long, yeah. long time ago. <laughs> yeah, and like for me, I haven't seen The Little Mermaid in years. Like, I have two little sisters, so I'm assuming I saw it. I'd say within the past ten years. Maybe like 10 or so years ago. So it's been a long time since I've seen The Little Mermaid. Mm -hmm. So what I was surprised was I really enjoyed this movie watching it because I haven't seen or thought about this story in so Mm -hmm. long, right? So I really enjoyed a lot of it. But then when you think about it and you're not telling a new story, you're telling a story that's already been done before. So that's where it gets difficult for me. Because it's like if I had never seen The Little Mermaid before, this was a brand new IP, hell yeah, this is a four. This is great. But considering this is not a brand new IP, these songs have been sung before, we all know the story, well, that's where it starts lacking. But I will say, I'm still going to give it a three and a half because I enjoyed it a lot. Mm-hmm. I had fun. Um, I can think, you know, at some point in time when I have children, taking them to see this or having them see this even before the animated one, I don't think would be that bad. Besides the fact it's a lot longer, so kid, little kids might get bored. Oh, yeah, because yeah, 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 yeah. this one's a lot longer. But. It was some girl, little girl, not little, she was like maybe like 10 or 12, mm. but it was like after we got out, she was like, I'm ready to go home. Let's oh, go. Yeah. <laughs> she, yeah. I was like, we need to get this girl a ride. I was like, <laughs> yeah, someone take her. Yeah, someone get her out of here. Yeah. <laughs> she was not with the shits. Yeah, no. So I would say that would be, you know, this was like over two hours versus the other one's not even an hour, full hour and a half. But. Yeah. Um, but yes, but either way, three and a half. I really enjoyed it. I thought, um, well, also, fun fact, I uh, uh, love Javier Bardem. Uh, I think oh, he's of course. fucking awesome. I fucking love Javier Bardem. Whenever he's in anything, I'm like, hell yeah. Um, so yeah, but three and a half because I agree with a lot of what you said. Some of the CGI was lacking. Um, other performances could have been a little bit better, I suppose. Um, not, I suppose they could have been a little bit better. But as a whole, I really enjoyed this movie. I thought it was really good. And if it wasn't just a remake of something, that that I would have given it higher. But mm-hmm. you can't really give something higher because all it's doing is just replicating the same formula for success that mm-hmm. something else did. Um, yeah, so three for Mike, three and a half for me. It's a solid movie. Mike, do you think people should see it in theaters? Yes, mm-hmm. actually. Mm-hmm. Like I said, a lot of the, the, the cooler CGI scenes was like, it was very... It reminded me, it's funny, 
and I don't know if this is from the original, but it reminded me of the scene. Uh, I, I just can't wait to be king from the Lion okay. King. Yeah. So when she, he's doing the um, Under the Sea, mm-hmm. yeah, it yeah, reminded yeah. me of the same shit where you like you got all the animals. Oh coming up, yeah, and kind of this whole mm-hmm. this like dance number with the like the different animals under the sea. I think that scene was really good for CGI. For sure. Um, yeah. Just seeing like the different like you had the mana rays mm-hmm. and like, the the seahorses and like different things like that. I think that was really cool. And like I said, I'd be interested to in see it in. Uh, 3D or 4DX mm-hmm. uh, screen yeah. where like you're more immersed in the the actual the actual world. That just costs more money. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I would say I agree. Um, I think seeing it in theaters would be good, especially if you have kids. Um, but then again, if they're super young, they're gonna get bored because it's mm-hmm. longer, it's and that's longer, yeah. and that's not saying the movie's boring. It's just because kids don't have attention spans like yeah. that. But solid movie, I'd say go ahead and see it. So now, what we always like to do, we're still not spoiling anything yet, is let's get some background in this movie. All right, so as Mike said, we had Melissa McCarthy. She wasn't very funny in this movie, though. Mm-hmm. I didn't find myself laughing for some reason. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think that it's funny. <laughs> the, I think the funnier scenes were between um, Sebastian and uh, King mm-hmm. Triton. Yeah. Like, kind of their, their mm-hmm. back and forth. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so The Little Mermaid live action came out uh, May 26, 2023. Mm-hmm. That was yesterday. The runtime. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually today. Oh, well, shit. Oh, yeah. uh, the runtime is two hours and fifteen minutes, and like we said, the original was only eighty-eight minutes. So mm-hmm. like, this is a a little bit longer, but it added in a little bit more backstory with certain characters. I yeah. think it added a few more songs. So yeah. it's like that's what kind of. Oh, sorry. Quick time. Um, not spoiling anything really, but then some of the new stuff they added was a total waste and didn't need to be yeah. added. Really, they were just like, we added it. Why? They played no part in this. But we'll get to that later. Yeah. Uh, the budget was, I have 200 million, it was actually 250 million. Okay. Yeah. Which is insane. So I think that's why they're kind of afraid as to how it'll, it'll, um, perform, mm-hmm. especially given the slate of movies that are coming out after and when mm-hmm. it just came out before it. So you still have Mario out, uh, Gardens of Galaxy, Fast X just came out and then next week is Transformers. We mm-hmm. the, no, sorry. Next week is Spider-Man, then uh, Transformers, yeah. then The Flash. So it's, it's huddled in mm-hmm. a, in a specific pocket yeah so like they're kind of worried with how much it needs to make Mm -hmm. in order to actually make a profit fair fair um so we'll see how it um performs this week and i think the projections were about like a hundred this one's really tough it was like 140 million domestic yeah and then 180 they don't see it doing well really um um, internationally for some reason but these are these are just projections we'll see yeah yeah. in a few days because this is also the memorial day weekend so Mm -hmm. instead of three days it's kind of it's calculating that that four day weekend yeah so it does get an extra day but it doesn't seem um i don't know but like you'll see like the obviously the first week doesn't really Mm -hmm. um give you um any inkling on how it'll do um further down the line Mm -hmm. especially because i think it outside of mario it's the only movie like kid yeah, yeah, more. Yeah, it makes sense. More like um, a kid movie because yeah, the next few things. I mean, it, like Transformers, possibly for kids, but not so much. Uh, Spider-Man. Amazing Spider Man across the Spider Verse, animated, but not that it's animated not like, doesn't always like mean kid, for kids. Kid yeah. So yeah. just like it might hold that pocket for like that demographic, yeah. so which will which might help. Spider Man's for adults, darn it, because I'm seeing it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you did try to justify two grown men seeing Little Mermaid. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Just like, yeah, we're just cool dudes. Yeah, no, we're just cool dudes hanging out. That's one of, like, you get that, because like, we, we saw the movie together, but at the same time, I'm like a single dude, because he got there before me. So I walk in the theater by myself, and I'm like, I hope these parents aren't just like judging me right now. <laughs> or just be like, sir, why are you near my child? Why do you think I sat where I sat? I should have like, sat off to the side <laughs> and like I saw it's, I, I told the guy taking the ticket and other people I was like I'm just doing this to review the movie <laughs> <laughs> see I have a notebook I didn't adjust my, I, could, I just looked at my <laughs> phone did not make eye contact <laughs> oh lord but yeah <laughs> Oh. oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, so we don't know the box office yet, but it's projected to make about a hundred, maybe twenty mil, something okay. like that. Okay, like domestically, open weekend, yeah, the first weekend. Yeah. Um, right now, the Rotten Tomato scores it looks like at a sixty-seven. Okay. Uh, critic score, but ninety-four audience score. That makes a lot of sense to me because it kind of yeah. goes with what I said. If you're looking to like reminisce and enjoy this movie, mm-hmm. you're not gonna like. If you like the Little Mermaid story, you're not gonna hate this movie. But if you're looking to like critique it and think about it as a movie, well then like it has flaws. Yeah. And that totally makes sense to me. Because again, but even then, sixty seven percent. Yeah, it's not terrible. It's not terrible. It's like it's a solid movie. It just didn't do anything new or revolutionary. Yeah. But yeah. 
Um, the genre is a- a adventure f- uh, family fantasy. Okay. Directed by Rob Marshall, who did uh, Chicago, Memoirs of a Geisha. Okay. Um, and then he started. I, think, I didn't realize he did Memoirs of a Geisha. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. and then recently he's he's been a Disney darling. So he did one okay. of the Pirates of the Caribbean movies, I believe, on Stranger Tides. Okay. Which had Javier. Oh, no, I mean, that was a Dead Man Tunnel Tales. Yeah. yeah. Um, Into the Woods and then Mary Poppins. So okay. like, and, yeah, I think his last few have been yeah, like yeah, yeah. Disney um, Disney releases. Disney's so, got that money. So I think yeah. it makes sense why they had him do this one. Yeah. Um, starring uh, Holly Bailey as Ariel. What was it? Holly Bailey. Holly Bailey. Holly Bailey. Okay, and if I accidentally say Holly Bailey at some point in time, but Holly Bailey. Okay. Cool. I mean, you're going to be saying Ariel from. Yeah, I'm going to be forth. saying Ariel, but yeah. <laughs> um, as Ariel, uh, Melissa McCarthy as Ursula. Yep. Jonah Howard King as Prince Eric. Javier okay. Bardem as King Triton. Uh, Jacob Tremblay as Flounder. Uh, Aquafina as Scuttle. And the beat Diggs as Sebastian. Cool. Um, what about the Seven Sisters? <laughs> the only one, the only one I like the only ones that had actual like Wikipedia pages were Simone Ashley mm-hmm. because everybody knows her from Bridgerton. Uh, Bridgerton and then Sex Education. Yes, and right. then one of the other sisters, but I don't, I didn't, I don't really, I didn't know what she did. Uh, I think she, I can't remember. Yeah, um, and then the tagline is "Be a part of her world." Hmm. Makes sense. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right, so now, before we get into our uh, play-by-play section, a quick word from our sponsors, and really just a project that's going on right now, is some of you may have heard or seen, because I've been posting on our social media, is we have a comic, or I have a comic, it's called Evil's Weapon Chainsaw Wars. I would not recommend this for families, um, though, you know, grandparents for sure. But no, um, yeah, so it's on Kickstarter, we have 19 or 20 days left of the campaign, we're at 57 or 8% right now, which is phenomenal, did that in like, you know, 9-10 days. So super pumped about that. Um, it's been going great. I've had so much fun uh, writing it. It is an action horror story, and my quick tagline for it is kind of like imagine Texas Chancellor Massacre and Evil Dead meets Highlander, and it's going to be a lot of fun, and it so far has been. Issue one, uh, where we have right now, is you know ramping up and building, so it's kind of like a classic horror story, and then we'll continue to go. I think we'll be about 10 issues. But yeah, uh, Kickstarter will have the link in the video description as well. Check it out. All right. Now let's get into spoilers. So Little Mermaid's known for its desert sequences. Lots of, you know, hot sand real, real and Real Mad Max. Yeah, real Mad Max ass. Could you imagine a Mad Max-esque Little Mermaid? <laughs> oh, if it was a war, a literal war between yeah. the surface world and under the sea, oh my god. That'd be, that'd be pretty sick. But yes, Little Mermaid, has it open? What's going on in this movie? <laughs> so there's a, a bunch of, like, I think... Uh, Opening with like pictures of the sea, like mm-hmm. waves crashing, and then there's a quote. I didn't get the full quote. Of, uh, I apologize, mm-hmm. but I got the tail end of it. It was just like, but a mermaid, but a mermaid has no tears, so they are the saddest. I think that was the full quote. It said dot dot dot. But <laughs> a mermaid. Yeah, it said. I I had the same thought because it said dot dot dot. A mermaid has no tears, and I was like, what? Where's the first part? Where is it? But I'm it just seemed sure. like the weirdest excerpt. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm pretty it was like sure. this one, page two. This yeah. one, page seventeen. <laughs> like. Okay. Yeah. But yeah. So I think the 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 that's from uh, Hans Christian Andersen, who yeah. I believe wrote the uh, Think from Fairy Tales. Yeah. 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 Though I will say, for the record, for remember, it's not having a lot of tears. Ariel sure cried a lot. So you know. Hans but Christian if Anderson. you noticed, mm-hmm. you didn't see her tears until she was on the on it's the surface because she's in water so exactly. how that that's works the is, point yeah, I'm just saying you know water. So, <laughs> as a writer how are you not getting a <laughs> metaphor <huh? laughs> you can still cry though so she could still cry the whole time they just w- ocean immediately wipe the tears away But like, exactly you know. so they're the saddest no because you don't even know they're sad no because they can still cry <laughs> can we get to the actual film <laughs> alright sure we'll leave the philosophy for our second podcast okay gotcha so anyway everyone knows the story of Little Mermaid the end so we like to review at the end of our podcast <laughs> But yeah, so that's the first quote, and it was like obviously this is something that'll um, come to come to play. This what we call foreshadowing, I guess, mm-hmm, in the mm-hmm. in the biz. <laughs> Fancy. <laughs> uh, but it opens with these sailors. They're out to sea, and mm-hmm. they're throwing harpoons into the water because they think they see a mermaid. Mm-hmm. And then you, <clears throat> it immediately. I think this was interesting too. It showed this animosity between mer- the mer people and mm-hmm. human beings, right? Yeah. So, like, they're, you know, throwing harpoons at them, trying to catch this mermaid, saying that, you know, if they, mermaids, you know, lure you with their siren song just to kill you. Yep. So, it's just like you... That tracks. Isn't that Odysseus? 
Uh, well, the sirens do the same. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Siren, yeah, sirens, so yeah. sirens, yeah. But it was like, yeah, so there's this, I think, you know, obviously sailors are very superstitious mm-hmm. and all that. I have all these tall tales. So it was just like, there is this uh, animosity towards sea mm-hmm. creatures. Yeah. Um, and so you see our, you know, one of our main characters and Prince Eric mm-hmm. trying to stop the other sailors from, you know, throwing the harpoons because it was like, that's not a fucking... That's not a mermaid. Probably it's is a though. dolphin. Yeah, it could have been. Uh, <laughs> I'd be on the side of the sailors here. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> I missed to hear both sides over here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, one side sailors. <laughs> um, but yeah, so yeah, he Prince Eric stops them from throwing uh, the uh, harpoons in the sea, and then like he's doing like dangerous stuff on the for no reason. For no reason. <laughs> I just looked at your notes and it was like, you just say that's not safe, Eric. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's literally, like, that's all right, safe. Dad. Well, because you have Prince Eric like swinging from like mast to mast. I'm like, sailors don't do that. <laughs> I can't sail, but I'm. And, and you get a lot it. of exposition in this first scene. We're just like, obviously, like Prince Eric, like normally, like normally a prince wouldn't be doing these things. Mm-hmm. You're supposed to be, you know, gearing up to become the next ruler of wherever you, you know, wherever you, uh, wherever you're from. Mm-hmm. Uh, your father wouldn't do this, and it yeah. was like you get backstory about like how he wasn't born to the kingdom. He was mm-hmm. like sh- found in a shipwreck and brought to them, and they adopted. Yeah. Um, so a lot of exposition on Eric's backstory mm-hmm. and backstories about the Mer people. Yeah. And then they bring up the fact that they need to get out of the water because the coral moon is coming and mm-hmm. the sea king mm-hmm. is merciless, you know, yeah. to sailors. There's been a bunch of shipwrecks in the past few months. Yeah. Um, and so, like, there's this fear, and they need to get back to, the, to celebrate the coral moon. Question. Yes. Has King Trident been a dick like this? Has he been actually crashing all these ships and everything? And I'll ask it again later if we don't want to answer it now. Honestly, I, I think it was... I thought it was Ursula. So I'm not 100% sure, but we see later on when we learn more details about yeah. this, we're like, I wouldn't be surprised if he was doing it. But the way yeah. he reacted to, like, the, the mm-hmm. shipwreck, he was just like, look, they, they're... Messing right. up our ocean. Fair. That's also true. Too. I mean, that, true. I mean, he could be a good actor, but it was yeah. just like I don't think he's like he makes a mess and he was like ah, yeah. sees a ship zap. <laughs> Why would the humans do such a thing? Yeah, that's fair. No, good point. Good point. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so um, then we jump to uh, King Trident himself. Mm-hmm. He's summoning his daughters yep. of the seven seas. There's seven of them, obviously. Yeah. Um, what are the seven seas? I meant to Google that, but. The seas, I don't know. I couldn't, uh, I couldn't help you on the Atlantic, guy. Pacific, those are Indian, oceans. Tundra, uh, don't they count as one of the seas? I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. Yo, comment below. It's, please, for the love <laughs> of God, tell us what all the seven seas are. I'm not an, uh, an oceaner. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah. I'm pretty sure those count because there's like the Indian Ocean. I'm pretty sure that counts as one of the seven seas. It's been a long time. I taught math and um, science, <laughs> not social studies. Anyway, back to you. <laughs> Showing your degree, <laughs> or, or lack thereof. <laughs> it's a sticker. It's, it's nice though. It's a nice sticker. Uh, but yeah, so uh, yeah, uh, King Triton calls his daughters um, to a council meeting because mm-hmm. they they all return back to uh, his kingdom for the coral moon. Yep. Because you know, outside of that, they're you know ruling whatever the sea they're in uh, in charge of. Because when he wants to kill a lot of humans, he needs to get all the sisters <laughs> together so he can kill all the humans. I'm on your side, sailors. I know what he's doing to you. <laughs> but yeah, he notices that uh, one of his daughters is missing. The mm-hmm. youngest, Ariel. Yep. And then we meet Ariel, and she's out with her friend Flounder. <laughs> Um, this was the alright so I got over it I did get over it but w- dude when I first saw Flounder I had no idea what it was really going to look like I I was like oh my god what the hell is that I was like what in the world am I looking at Ariel look out look out it's going to get you oh shit that's Flounder oh my god like I got over it and he actually to me he got endearing by the end of it I think his voice did not yeah, the actual I, fish it, because of the voice and everything I was like I like Flounder he's an endearing fish when I first saw fucking Flounder guys I was like, what in the world am I looking at? <laughs> but yeah, so... Oh, just to say, so Triton, <coughs> King Triton sees that uh, Ariel's not there, so he tells Sebastian, mm-hmm. his uh, confidant, to go find her. Yep. <clears throat> and then, so we meet, excuse me, Ariel, she's out um, searching shipwrecks in the sea, like, so he's forbidden all the mer people mm-hmm. to go to the surface because... Excuse or at least Ariel. Maybe other No, people. all everybody. Oh, all everybody. Okay. Yeah. yeah. They're, they're not allowed to go to the surface because Ariel, his wife was killed by a human. So, yeah. like, after that, he, you know, um, didn't let anybody go up. Yeah. I wasn't sure if it was just for his daughters or if it was anything. I just, I assume everybody. That's fair. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, um, can't tell him what to do. <laughs> 
I'm saying it's a wide ocean. How, how you <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, like, who's gonna know? <laughs> but um, but yeah. So we see her collecting different uh, mm-hmm. items and trinkets. She goes and finds like a bunch of shipwrecks. So mm-hmm. she you know goes and searches the ships with flounder. And it was like the most annoying thing. This happened in um, Avatar, mm-hmm. the way of water, where it's just like um, the rambunctious young one, and yeah. then like the the other one just like trailing behind them, telling yeah. them no, but not not stopping them anywhere yeah. or anything like that. So Flounder's like, "Don't go in the aerial," and just follows yeah, right behind. Right. Yeah, I'm like you enabler. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. um, and so while she's searching one of these ships, like she finds a fork and like. Different. It's actually called a dingle hopper. Uh, we'll, we'll learn that later. I don't know what yeah. it is now. I just said it off the top of my head. Yeah, that's just what I named it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll catalog it later. Yeah. <laughs> but while she's searching one of the um, the abandoned ships, uh, she gets attacked by a shark, mm-hmm. which looks super realistic. I don't even know why you're bringing it up. Yeah. Um, <laughs> 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 yeah, right, yeah. Say, so like with the ecosystem so sharks just a, so was there a shark in the original movie I don't remember I can, I don't, once again I only read the IMD sorry the uh, Wikipedia of the original movie mm-hmm. I didn't I meant to watch it to yeah. read, but I didn't I, also I was trying to give this one it's grace yeah, right? no, for right? sure. so I didn't want to do like well it this one did it this way and that way so I didn't really go in and like uh, do like a shot for shot thing yeah. so I don't know yeah so if there was comment and call Mike a dummy and say of course there was a shark in there <laughs> why would you ask me that that's exactly <laughs> what I need <laughs> but yeah I can't remember if there was so you can call me a dummy that's fine but yeah because I couldn't remember if the shark happened in the first one but then also like sharks eat mermaids that's pretty like um, I guess so I it, guess yeah there right, are fish cool. yeah all right. um, but yeah, so using Ariel, and you see her kind of like one, she's very uh, headstrong and like um, she's fearless mm-hmm. um, and resourceful. So in the in this scenario with the shark, she finds out a way to both save Flounder mm-hmm. and herself, trick the shark, and so they can escape. Yeah. Um, and so on her way back, she's like looking at some of the things she's found, mm-hmm. and that's when we meet Scuttle. Yes. Uh, so apparently, so we uh, we talked about. Oh, did that. you look this up? So apparently okay. they switched Scuttle. So originally in the animated movie, she was uh, sorry, he uh-huh. was a seagull. Yes, they switch it to a diving bird. Uh-huh. So like they do dive. Yeah, you they, know, like, they dive and then they just kind of hang out that long and talk to mermaids <laughs> so while they're underwater for ten minutes. I didn't feel like reading the full paragraph, <laughs> but it was like I think that was an important. Like they made that distinction so that that character could exist underwater with her for, with I, the rest of them. Because I guess that makes sense because... In a way, you, but If still. they can't go to the surface at all, which in the animated movie, you didn't have that rule, you can't go to the surface at all. Yeah. And this one, can't go to the surface at all, so how could Ariel talk to a bird because mm-hmm. it dives yeah, yes. and then it can now breathe underwater and talk. Yeah. Though I will say, and this is the last thing, I don't understand the ecosystem of this place, and this is the last thing I'll say about it. Oh yeah, because Scuttle... Because a... Scuttle dives down, eats a fish in front of Flounder, mm-hmm. and is like, yeah, that's right, I'm meeting your brother. And then it's like, hey Flounder, how you doing? And I'm like, mm-hmm. wait, so, because I'm like, are all I mean, I guess it's Lion talking? King rules. We're like, yeah. <laughs> literally, Lion King was less like, look, um, Fossa told yeah, somebody, yeah, yeah. he was like, yeah, we eat them, but hear me out. Yeah. When we die, we turn the grass and they eat us. That's fair. So, fair trade. But the antelope weren't <laughs> hanging out with the lions <laughs> outside of this. Like, that was like, yes, yeah, so like, <laughs> that's, what, that's what's even worse. It was just like when Simba was born. Uh, the antelope was, we gotta go to the, the killer's <laughs> house? Yeah, literally. I I mean <laughs> they'd be so pissed be like, I gotta, like what the fuck this motherfucker go just ate Dave yeah, like, he got the yeah. nerve to yeah. show off this kid I was like, <laughs> if that kid was here I'd kick it in the head I'm like alright antelope alright Mr. Antelope you gotta calm down <laughs> but, but anyway alright so ecosystem anyway <laughs> so yeah we meet Scuttle and Scuttle is like kind of their link to the surface world mm-hmm. so She's able to, like, she produces, like, uh, sorry, Ariel produces, like, a fork that she found. Dingle hopper. And uh, Scuttle's like, oh, that's a, a dingle hopper, or whatever. It's yeah. just like she has experience with humans and stuff like that's that. That's what I call them in my house <laughs> dingle hoppers. <laughs> dingle hoppers, doodads, yeah, hoot nannies. Yeah, hoot nannies. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's when Sebastian mm-hmm. um, finds them and she. He reminds her that, you know, your sisters are here for the coral, mm-hmm. you know, coral moon. 
yeah. where you're supposed to be. And that's when she remembers and she's like, oh shit, I'm late. And so she returns home and immediately gets chastised by King Trident mm -hmm. or whatever. And um, Flounder tries to, you know, save her and say, it was like, oh, it wasn't her it was her idea. It was just like, it was my idea. It was like, she had no idea there'd be a shark. He's like, shark? Shark? Yeah, yeah. like, what? So you were at the shipwrecks again? Because only sharks hang out. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And so, um, yeah, so we get this. Once again, it was like King Trident trying to save his daughter. That's why he doesn't want them, them to, to you know, go out. Mm -hmm. um, and then, like, so he, you know, tells her not to... Not to go to the surface, like you know that, and then like he has a a one on one with uh, Sebastian later, like mm -hmm. right after he was like, was I too hard on her? Yeah, and it, I think Sebastian might have been the the comic relief, uh, just because of the fact that like every time King tried and sent him to do something, yeah, he would swim a smooth two feet away and <laughs> yeah, then start talking talk shit. So much, shit. and I'm just like, bro, <laughs> you you still in earshot? Yeah, like, I'm like, he's right there. Granted, I know it's the ocean, so ain't no doors. But, <laughs> yeah, but like. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Leave the room. Like <laughs> Sebastian should be like right around this dumb motherfucker. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, I got a degree. I don't need this shit. <laughs> if I get, he, gets, he sticks his face in. I'm gonna fucking snap it with my claws again. I'm like something's right there. He uh, kept talking shit, and I'm just like he would literally swim away two strokes. Mm -hmm. and be like this bitch here. <laughs> <that."> <laughs> but yeah, so it's like you can definitely see that King Trident doesn't want to be um, this harsh on her. No, right? he really. No. But it was just like he's just so protective mm -hmm. of his family after you know losing his wife. Yeah, and so this is where you get uh, Ariel returns to uh, her grotto where mm -hmm. she keeps all of the uh, treasures, gadgets, and, and gizmos yeah. are plenty. <laughs> Who's that's, and what's that it? she's found, you know, <laughs> through the years. Mm -hmm. Um, and then she sings the iconic uh, "Be a Part." Of, is it just a part of your world? Is it? Uh, no, that's the I've got gadgets and gizmos are plenty. Mm -hmm. Who's the one's gonna? It's uh, part of more. your world. Is it part? Yeah, it's part of your world. Yeah, that's part of your world. That's what I'm saying. I'm part not, of your world. But like yeah. I said, I haven't seen the movie since 1996, so it was like it wasn't even like obviously I'm familiar with the Little Mermaid. Yeah. And the story, kind of, but it was just like it wasn't one that was high on my list. Yeah. Yeah. When I was a kid, I didn't care. Well, because also I think you kind of get that like. When you're like a kid, you're like, I want to watch Lion King, Hercules. Aladdin, Hercules. Yeah, exactly. Those yeah, yeah it wasn't for like well, it's, the it guy. Was, the little boys had the Disney princes, and the girls had the Disney princesses. Mm -hmm. So it was just yeah. yeah, we'll watch it because you know equality. But <laughs> <laughs> you know, they put it on a like, Kitty Academy, and I'm like, come on. They're like, Ed, we can't watch Lion King again. It's like, but Mari's on. <laughs> <laughs> Who the baby daddy? <laughs> and, so, <laughs> and so, um. After, yeah, so she sings Be a Part of Your World. And she does a good job. I think she... Yeah, no, that I, was her singing, though, right? Yeah, yeah. So that was the big part of, like, when people were complaining about the, uh, Black Arrow. It was like, well, one, like, the, it's a fictional character who gives a shit. Yeah. But two, you want somebody... It's a Disney property, right? Mm -hmm. And one that was heavy, like, a big part of the um, character was they're singing. So mm -hmm. the same thing, like Lion King, yep. whatever it is, um, like Beauty and the Beast or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, like, you want somebody that can sing, and it was like... Holly Bailey is like has a phenomenal voice, yep. so it's like you knew at least like I said some of the acting was like she, like she, hopefully she'll grow as an actress, mm -hmm. but it was like as a performer and a singer like she's already there, like, yep. she's amazing. Yeah, she did a great job of singing. Yeah. So it was like yeah, the, the song was great, um, and then like so right before this you get uh, King Trident saying that he wants um, Sebastian looking after yep. uh, Ariel or whatever, mm -hmm. and that's when he brings up the fact that he went to. Crap colleges. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just talking shit the whole time. <laughs> I need to get my degree yeah. from Crab University yeah, in liberal to do arts. This, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so she sings. And yeah, like you said, her her voice was amazing. We had no doubt about that mm -hmm. and, and at all. Which was interesting. The fact that she's playing in a movie where like a big majority of it is like she's not allowed to use her voice. Yeah. Uh, which is interesting. But they did a good job with the internal. Oh, that was later. But, yeah. but they, they they couldn't. It wasn't consistent. That's what mm -hmm. was annoying. Yeah, fair. I think if it was the whole time where you could hear her inner thoughts, but mm -hmm. she couldn't articulate it because she had lost her voice. Yeah. I think it would have been way more interesting. They picked. They picked and chew and you chose. Can't, you can't sing for a solid hour. <laughs> Not sing, but just like her thoughts, like what she's nah, thinking. I was fine with it. Anyway, I don't know. I, that's what kind of frustrated me with mm -hmm. the the because, like I said, she her acting non verbally didn't translate. Mm. as well mm -hmm. so it was just like yeah at least her thought or something fair but anyway so Sebastian's you know going to find her because mm -hmm. that, that's his job now she's singing uh, Part of Your World and as she finishes her song she notices that there's like 
explosions yeah. at the surface. Mm-hmm. So when she goes up, she sees that it's not you know cannon fire or anything like that. It's uh, just a celebration of the coral moon. There, yeah. uh, Eric's ship and a few other ships as they're returning back to the island, they're shooting off fireworks and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so she goes <laughs> and um, she chills on a lifeboat on the on the ship to yeah. listen to you know what's what's going on. Mm-hmm. So the sailors are singing a song. Eric, you know. You can tell he's a very much beloved prince. So even yeah. though he's royal or whatever, he's like he doesn't see himself as separate. From yeah, he's him. hanging out with the common yeah. folk. Yeah, um, and so he's having a conversation with. I didn't write the guy's down name down, but I thought it was something with a G. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But the, the the general or whatever. The like you know that his um, assistant. Yeah, his yeah. like. Um, Butler, hand servant, whatever. I thought he called. had like a higher rank or something like that. He I, seemed like more than just like a butler. Oh, he was like the head of like the house almost. Yeah. Yeah, something. But yes. But anyway, so that guy, his kind of his uh, mentor, mm-hmm. not mentor, uh, caretaker. His Alfred. Caretaker. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alfred was a butler. Shut up. <laughs> so me saying butler worked then. <laughs> <laughs> Alfred was maybe more than a butler. But, anyway, um, but yeah, his caretaker, he's talking to his caretaker about the fact that. We get more exposition about why he's not from. Mm-hmm. Since he wasn't born on the island, he doesn't. Yeah. That's why he doesn't feel anchored to it. He mm-hmm. wants to see the world. He wants to um, change the world. He sees the fact that the world is growing mm-hmm. and they're kind of being left behind. He's not afraid to travel the seas, even though the guy mentions that the fact that the Sea King yeah. has been sinking our ships and stuff like that. He just he just kind of wants to be, be more. He can't mm-hmm. explain it. It's just in his blood to. Yeah. Uh, adventure. He wants to be part of the world. Yeah. And like, so Ariel hears this and she, she, once again, I think this is her first interaction with actual humans. Mm-hmm. So if all she knows as humans to be monsters and stuff like this, this is a very different mm-hmm. um, experience to have. It's a pretty dreamy monster. <laughs> <It's> got, <you> <laughs> know. <laughs> <laughs> and so as Eric is having this conversation with his caretaker, with Ariel listening, um, he notices that the, the seas are kind of... Mm-hmm. Um, a getting, storm's coming. A storm's yeah. coming. And so they try to, you know, try to prepare, like, the, the ship and Shit all. Shit goes to hell quick. Really quick. <laughs> it's like, the ships are very flammable in thunderstorms, apparently, because that thing is on fire immediately. Yeah. Yeah. And so the whole entire crew goes to the lifeboats. Ariel kind of, you know, leaves, it, but stays to see what happens. Mm-hmm. This, the boat crashes. Uh, the crew gets on the lifeboats. Uh, Eric stays behind to save his dog. I believe his name was Max? Yes. Okay. And, um... But because he saved Max, he's left on the ship. Mm-hmm. It kind of gets knocked out as it's going, as, as it's turning, um, as it's sinking. Mm-hmm. And so Ariel, still being there, she goes, she saves him. Yep. And she brings him to the to shore. <laughs> <laughs> and so she um, kind of wakes him up, like just like admiring his face. Because once again, this is a, her first experience with a human being this mm-hmm. close. Yeah. And like you said, he's also, quote, unquote, a dreamy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so Eric starts to wake up um, because she, you know, started singing to him yeah. her siren song. And uh, before he can fully wake up, the rest of, like, the crew mm-hmm. are looking for him. And yeah. they they see that he's, you know, uh, washed up on shore. So she Ariel has to escape. And the funny thing was for me... Mm-hmm. Was I really wanted to see Ariel moving outside of the water as a mermaid? Because uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like a walrus. <laughs> it's, like, it's not graceful. Like she didn't. No, no. She didn't run into the water. Was it a? It was it a tuck and roll type no, of. No. <laughs> We've seen how walruses move. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> that would have been Ariel. I was uh, like, I just really wanted to see if a no fucker really <laughs> was a smooth dumb dumb. But, but I, it would have been like me. I was a fat little kid. When I got out of the pool, I would halfway get up and, and then. I Roll, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then took it out of water. He said, uh, "Success." <laughs> <laughs> no, <Nailed it. laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah. So uh, Eric is woken up by her voice, but he he sees kind of an image of her, but his eyes are fully open. Mm-hmm. He just heard her voice. Yeah, and so Eric returns to the sea, and in parallel, you see that they are both obsessed with mm-hmm. the experience that they just had. Yes. Eric is obsessed with finding the woman that saved him. He mm-hmm. just didn't know, doesn't know what she looks like. Know that uh, knows her voice. Yeah. Ariel, after um, rescuing him, she's obsessed with you know being a part of his world. Like yeah. uh, you know, is just, this when she's on the rock? 
Yes. Yeah. Dude, this was like, that was like horror fuel. Like literally, <laughs> that was like the one part of the movie where like, how was, like, she like slithered and yeah, skittered and this, up like this I, said, I, I leaned over and said, I was like, why is she shaking? Yeah, like literally. She was like, she, she was like, <sighs> yeah, it was nuts. Like that was just like, okay, she's gonna, but, like this could have turned to a horror movie very quickly based solely on that one performance. It is funny because in yeah. a few weeks, a, a horror movie, not not a, but a movie about where mermaids are the, yeah. the villain. Uh-huh. Oh, really? Coming up. <laughs> yeah. It was it, just like in parallel. It was really interesting. So cool. I was just like, whoa. <laughs> All right, it was yeah. really weird, but yeah. I think they were trying to recreate, recreate the iconic scene with Ariel on the rock as the the waves crash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was just like, she yo, was, you good, Ariel? Yeah, yeah, man. She was skittering and slithering on you these rocks. You met that guy one time, yeah, my guy. That was obsessive. Yeah. But um, <laughs> but yeah, like I said, so in parallel, they are obsessed with mm-hmm. uh, you know finding one another. Yeah. And then we uh, what do we see that um so. Ariel's sisters, uh, Ariel and her sisters are at one of the shipwrecks of the shipwreck actually of Eric's ship Mm -hmm. um, because Ariel's going to collect, excuse me, more artifacts and her sisters are there just to clean it up and like they're just frustrated at the fact that these humans are basically just leaving their trash in the ocean. Well, their their ship crashed. That's not really there. I'm just throwing that out there. They they can't. (laughs) But I think that's the interesting (laughs) thing, right? If the mer people don't know anything about the humans. It yeah. just seems like, yo, what y'all doing? Yeah. <laughs> oh, was that kind of the lesson of this movie? No, just, oh, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> we will get there, sir. Uh, oh, okay, okay. They didn't hammer it over anybody's <laughs> tail. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so like Ariel is very much like defending humans, mm-hmm. you know, uh, against her dad. Yeah. Um, and so she swims away and like her sisters are saying like she's acting differently. Yeah. But she was like, I mean, that's how I was. And it was like, they, one of her sisters mentions that she, it was, she was like that because of a boy. Yep. And a so, mer boy. A mer boy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, King Triton hears this. So he gets uh, Sebastian because this mm-hmm. is the person that he asked to look after his daughter. So yep. it was like... <clears throat> Is my is my little girl like in love? This was uh, this was super creepy going into this. I thought something creepy was happening because like you see this little fish going, and all of a sudden like a fish comes out of the rocks and just eats it and like goes away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then like Sebastian's like, oh god, like scuttling on, <laughs> and it's King Trident's throne room. Yeah, that was, like, that was a creepy. Like, also, because it's all open. Yeah, like, yeah. you would think there's like it'd be somewhere enclosed. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so um, uh, yeah, King Trident uh, interrogates. Mm-hmm. Uh, What's his name? Sebastian. Sebastian. Well, he's just like, is there a boy? And then Sebastian just spills the beans immediately. <laughs> he's like, I told her not to go up there. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> humans are bad. <laughs> because Sebastian was there when, like, right after she mm-hmm. sang her song, sang yeah. the uh, Part of Your World song, mm-hmm. right after she saved Eric. Uh, yeah. And, you know, she did all that. Sebastian was there. And he was basically, he, he told Scuttle, don't tell anybody. He told uh, mm-hmm. Flounder, don't tell anybody. Like, yeah. keep this a secret. Yep. But immediately, as soon as he got pressed, <laughs> spills it immediately. Spilled the beam. <laughs> and so, uh, Trident goes to Ariel's grotto where she's mm-hmm. hiding all of her, like, human treasures. Mm-hmm. And she actually, I don't know how she did it, but she grabbed a statue that was on Eric's ship. Yeah. And brought it to her grotto. And, like, she's, like, you know, fantasizing over it because of the fact that she's thinking about Eric. Yeah. She said the statue's eyes were dreamy. And like it's like the deadest, most like blank statues. Like, aren't his eyes dreamy? And I'm like, whoa, bro, you gotta relax, Ariel. It reminds me of Frozen when a uh, mm-hmm. homegirl fell in love with. Uh, it wasn't Kristoff or was it Hans or whatever. Oh, yeah, the dick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it was just like because it was the first boy that she met. And it was yeah. like, calm your yeah, act your ass down. Ooh, yo, they finished each other's sandwiches. All right, that was a big deal. All right. Which is a big no no yeah. for me. Yeah, it's my sandwich. So you order your own, goddamn it. <laughs> yeah. I guess I'm not in love. Yeah. That's what it is. <laughs> if you said you said you weren't hungry, I don't know. <laughs> 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 These are my fries. Yeah, you yeah. can order fries for yourself. Exactly. You, remember when you said you didn't want fries? I don't understand. We're off track. Focus. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, King Trident uh, finds Ariel's grotto with all her human treasures, and he tells her not to go back to the surface. And mm-hmm. she's like, "I can't promise that." Yeah. So in a rage, she just destroys her treasure. Right. Which, for the record, she's like, "Look, Dad, I don't want to lie to you." And I'm like, "Yeah, that's, yeah. that's you know, mm-hmm. that's you know." Applause. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, applause. Yeah. Admirable. That's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> <laughs> and so he destroys her things and he goes, um, you know, uh, don't go back up there, basically. Because yeah. that was the right way to do this, for sure. Yeah. And I think, I would think even immediately, he not immediately, but he does feel remorseful. Oh, yeah, for sure. It. But like I, it's one of those things where it's just like, 
you think you're doing what's right. Yeah, it takes sure. a minute. It's a retrospective to uh, take a step back to be like. Yeah, and at the end of the day, if Javier Bardem tells me I'm doing something wrong, I'm gonna listen <laughs> to the man because it's Javier Bardem. So like, it makes sense. Yeah. Even if he's a bad guy, I'm like, yeah, it makes sense. And, yeah. <laughs> and so Ariel is um, crying, even though you can't see the tears in her grotto after her father's destroyed it. Mm-hmm. Um, Sebastian, you know, kind of apologizes, but she says, "Just leave me alone." Yep. And when they leave her alone. Um, we Ursula. See, we see that Ursula, who has been watching her, mm-hmm. I think it would have been better if they would have left her in secret a little bit longer. And mm-hmm. once again, I don't know the, mm-hmm. I can't, I didn't, you know, I didn't see the original, the original yeah. so I don't know when they introduced her. Yeah, um, I but I feel like it would have been better if they would have kept the villain or Ursula's reveal mm-hmm. to now. Yeah. Or like when they get to her later, mm-hmm. then before seeing her. But yeah. it was like you had to have Melissa McCarthy and Melissa McCarthy. Um, and so Melissa McCarthy has, sorry, Ursula has been Ursula. watching yeah. Ariel uh, using her eels. I think it's a uh, float. God damn it. Eel one and eel two. It was floatum and jetum, jetsum. Oh, Flo- okay. Floatum, floatum and, and jetsum. jetsum. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so she's been using them to spy on like the different people, like mm-hmm. different parts of the Mark Kingdom mm-hmm. or whatever. And like, so she sees Ariel's obsession with the human, so she's going to use this to her advantage. We mm-hmm. did find out that. She was a uh, Triton's sister who yep. got banished like yeah. 15 years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, and I wonder how she got the opposite. Once legs, again, right? Like, I, I feel like there's so much. If you're going to, like we said earlier, it was like one of those things where like a lot of the problems with these live action is just, it basically is just a shot for shot remake of the, mm-hmm. of the animated. Yeah. So you don't really add anything. Mm-hmm. So I think what could have been added is a bit of backstory. I would, or just in general, I would have liked to see some other mer people that had octopus legs and they were good. You know, like, just because you have so, you see, you see a, um, a variety. Yeah, of, you see a variety instead yeah. of like everyone being the same Murtail and then Ursula. Because that's like mm-hmm. she was at this point. This was her backstory. She was born disfigured, and literally everyone hated her for it. <laughs> and like, it just made her evil. That's literally what happened. The backstory of Ursula: She was born disfigured. She was Lady Gaga. <laughs> she wanted love. That's all she wanted. She would go and go to her Mur parents, and be like, "Love me," and they're like, "You're a witch." And then like, yeah, that's that's Ursula's backstory. But yeah, so are people are monsters. she's been spying on Ariel. She's going to use her to kind of get get her revenge on King Triton, her brother. Mm-hmm. And so float, Floatsum and Jetsum find her, and they do a projection of Ursula saying that, um, you know, uh, uh, I can help you, basically. Yeah. And so they lead uh, Ariel to... Um, Ursula's lair, which is like mm-hmm. kind of deep in the uh, in a trench somewhere, yep. the Mariana Trench, probably. Yeah, it's and not uh, explored all. <laughs> <laughs> and um, that's that's so funny. It was just like I was watching a commercial with uh, what's his name, uh, Quinta Bronson mm-hmm. for Hulu, and she goes. Um, why haven't we explored more of the ocean and not just shot at the TV? Because it's scary as shit. It's scary as fuck, man. <laughs> it made sense to me. Yeah, it okay. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so the, she's led to uh, the Ursula's lair mm-hmm. and followed closely by, uh, what's his name, uh, Sebastian and Flounder. Yep. Because they tried to, try to call her, but she didn't hear, him, hear yeah. them or whatever. And so in Ursula's lair, um, oh, actually, so before this, and God damn it. Keep jumping around, but before um, King Triton destroys um, the the her, mm-hmm. her treasures, we do get the uh, the um, this live action version of Under the Sea from. Uh, oh yeah, from, and it was and it was good. It, it was yeah. it was really it was good. good. And I said, like I said, I think this was a lot of the fun mm-hmm. of the the CGI and the VFX is with the the sea creatures yep. yeah. being used as like kind of like doing like a dance number mm-hmm. under the sea. Yeah. Also, oh, with that, that reminds me, why the hell aren't the jellyfish stinging Ariel? That was the one. I didn't part, get it either. Right? I was like, yo, I've seen Finding Nemo. Jellyfish sting other sea creatures too. All right? I remember that. But yeah. <laughs> so we're in Ursula's cave now. <laughs> so I just wanted to make sure we didn't miss that. Yeah, like the, the big singing. Um, yes. And it was a very good Under the Sea song. For yeah. Sure. Yeah. Excuse me. So yeah. In Ursula's lair, we, you know, she, it's funny. So uh, Ariel goes, uh, you're the sea witch. And, yeah. and Ursula goes, what? The what? What? <laughs> what did they say? What did you just call me? She like loses her cool for a second. And she's like, witch, shit, bring this back together. <laughs> this is one of those things like, oh, Ariel, no, we call her that. She doesn't, she doesn't know that. <laughs> she doesn't, uh, but for the record, she's just got skulls and skeletons. All right? Over. You she see, of, like, you see the skeletons of mer people. Yeah. Or, like, like, you assume that's evil. Just throwing yeah. that out there. Yeah. And so she says that, um, there's no way, she mentions the fact that Ariel, you know, mm-hmm. wants to be with Eric, but she can't because she she can't live on the surface. Mm-hmm. 
Um, but she says, um, if you want to make a deal, I can make you a human for three days. Yeah. But you have to give up your voice, mm-hmm. your gills, and your tail. Yes. Um, and initially, Ariel's like, no, like, I don't want to do that. But she, uh, you know, Ursula, gaslighting goes, well, I guess you can go back to your daddy then. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And this is when, and <laughs> this is when uh, Ariel's like, oh, hell no. Yeah, so, like, all right, fuck it, fine. She gives into the deal. She has three days to, mm-hmm. to get a tr- true love's kiss from Eric. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, if she does get that kiss, she'll remain a human being and be able to stay on the surface. If not, she needs to, she has to come back mm-hmm. and basically be Ursula's prisoner. Yep. Turn, turn back into a mermaid and become Ursula's prisoner. Yeah. Um, so she takes... Um, uh, a scale from her tail, mm-hmm. which uh, you know she needed a scale in blood. Yep. Yeah. Um, she creates the potion, and immediately uh, she loses her voice, her gills. She's you know trapped yeah. in the trench. I don't know how and she. And Ursula made it. just leaves her to drown. And yeah. Just like, well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and so somehow, um, uh, was it the flounder and uh, Sebastian, Sebastian get the, yeah. her to the surface, mm-hmm. um, and she gets uh, caught by a fisherman. Yeah. Uh, and. Uh, Taken to the, um, so she's fascinated by her. It was like super weird too because it was just like, I was like, is this Tarantino? It was a lot of feet shots. I oh, get it. Well, it's because but I was like, I got it, but yeah, it was just yeah. like, but initially I'm just yeah. like, all right, but she having very nice feet aside has nothing to do. <coughs> <laughs> but it was like, initially when I saw it, I was like, all right, god right. damn. But then you're right, obviously, yeah. the whole point is like she's a mermaid, so these, yes. these appendages yeah. are new. That's to why her. there's so much feet going on right here. <laughs> I was like, Tarantino's just sitting there like cinema. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is why. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, sorry, the cess with Eric. Uh, yeah. So she, um, it loses her voice, and then also Ursula mentions that uh, she added a little, you know, extra yeah. to the to the spell. Mm-hmm. Anytime Ariel thinks about, um, you know, the, oh, she'll just forget about. Yeah. The like yeah. Ariel, she like. like all right, for the record, if you're ever going to make a deal with... I don't know how magical deals work, but you need to write down some clauses So, that's what's something. interesting. So, yeah. like, in the, in, the, um, in the animated version, it was, like, a contract that she signed. Yes, yeah. And so, like, I watched uh, some... I wish I could give them credit. But it was, like, how A Little Mermaid should have ended. Mm-hmm. And it was just, like... Well, we know that she can write. So, she... Yeah. 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 so she just Because in the everything. animated yeah. one, she signed her name. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, yeah. So, it's just, like, all she had to do was, like... My name is yada yada yada. Yeah, yeah. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, sea witch took my voice, but I am the one that rescued you, and we should. We but this should, one was uh, a little different. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I guess they had the you know they saw that that mm-hmm. episode of what I watched, and they were just like, okay, we got to fix yeah. this. <laughs> and so yeah, so she um, has her memory, doesn't have her voice. Um, she gets taken um, from by she gets found by a sailor, a mm-hmm. fisherman, sorry, and he takes her to the um, castle. To the castle. And they get her cleaned up and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Oh, this is like that one we talked about, like the internal monologue. So, singing. yeah, a bit. Yeah, yeah. There's a bit like it, it was a bit of both. So just like um, they take her to the castle, and then they start mentioning that the prince is looking for because we got his song and his mm-hmm. the whole thing where his mom kind of um, mom the queen uh, forbi- him forbade him from sailing again yeah, because like, of what just island, happened. Yeah. And but he's just obsessed with finding this girl, so he's using all the the kingdom resources to find Ariel. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, and so as his uh, as the, the 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 maids are like cleaning her up and getting mm-hmm. her dressed, uh, they realize, holy shit, he's been looking for a girl. We found a girl. We found a girl. So like they go get him, and this is where you get her singing mm-hmm. in her head about being. I think be a part of your world yeah. or something. Well, there was a whole because she was singing about like gravity keeps taking me because she tried to stand mm-hmm. and fall. Yeah. And, like, that put that oh in, yeah, yeah, you're yeah, right. Yeah, right, yeah, while yeah, the yeah. whole part, but yeah. So then. Eric though comes in and Ariel wants to sing to him because mm-hmm. she still loves this guy. She just doesn't remember the fact that she needs to kiss him. She mm-hmm. but she still remembers her love, but she can't sing. So you get that nice internal like, but I can't sing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. I think it would have been better if that's what pissed me off because like not pissed me off. That was my one gripe is the fact that the actress because once again mm-hmm. in the animated movie that it can be as she was very expressive yes when right. she couldn't speak so mm-hmm. it was just like you could see her either trying to throw the words out or something like that but it was just like she was expressive to the 
so expressive that you got what she was trying to say without mm-hmm. her having to say it. Yeah, well, that's the perk of animation. Yes, it's and that's what I'm saying. So I think with, with Holly, like she's a you know a fine actress, but it was just like sh- she wasn't able to emote as well as a cartoon as <laughs> <laughs> emote some of these like some of the uh, some of her feelings yeah. and stuff like that. So it was just like I think it would have been better if they would just had her having an in- inner monologue the mm-hmm. whole time. Yeah, because it would have you know it would have for me it would have helped. It would have added to the performance. Okay. Um, cause otherwise it was just like, you had this great singer mm-hmm. that could, wasn't allowed to sing in the movie yeah. or actually talk for mm-hmm. a lot of it. So it was just like, well, how is she otherwise as an actress, you know? Fair. Um, but yeah, so Eric, you know, meets her cause he's excited as they found some woman, but mm-hmm. once again, he, he doesn't know what she looks like. He yep. only knows her by her voice and this woman doesn't talk. Yep. But he's, you know, once again, they show him being a great prince or a great royal where he's just like obviously you can stay here for as long as you yeah, want yeah stranger that crash here live in this castle for the rest of your life that's fine <laughs> whatever <I'm> like, okay <laughs> and so Sebastian shows up to the castle mm-hmm. and um, he mentions yeah. um, that they just have three days to get this kiss and as soon as he does Ariel just kind of she gets she goes aloof because mm-hmm. because of the spell yep anytime she they mention the kiss she forgets it yep and so she goes to sleep and I think Scuttle shows up as well, and he's like, "Well, we need to find a figure out a way to get this kiss mm-hmm. without her, not without her knowing. Yeah. But we can't get her to remember it, so we got to get him to yep. to do it. Um, and so they kind of start scheming as well. And then the next morning, I think it's at night. It's isn't it like that night. Ariel wakes up and she sneaks down and goes maybe. into. Maybe th- yeah. once again, I think the days were a little bit weird. The three days. It were seemed weird. like it was like she fell asleep, mm-hmm. and then it's, I thought it was like Scuttle came back in the morning. That's, That's probably I think Scuttle did come in the morning, and then something. Yeah. Okay. Fair. Yeah. Because then there's that. So one maybe that was the first day. The second day was like them exp- like exploring. I don't know. Yeah. Actually, yeah. I don't know. The, yeah. the days are a little bit weird. Yeah. But yeah. So the next the next. Sometime, day or whatever. Yeah. Sometime still within this three-day uh, time period. Ariel's exploring the castle. Sneaking about. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and um, she finds this room with, like, mm-hmm. a bunch of treasures. And um, Eric comes in, and he explains, like, these are all the things that I've accumulated mm-hmm. um, in my, as I've been wandering the world. And he has just maps and, like, just different, like, rocks and things like mm-hmm. that. And the first thing he finds is, like, this uh, this rock, you know, just huge mass mm-hmm. of... Uh, a massive rock, petrified sea rock. Or yeah, whatever. yeah. And like he's, you know, he's, you know, loved it because he found it. And Ariel knows what it is, being that she is a sea creature. Yeah. So she just slams it on the ground, cracks it open, and he's like, "What are you doing?" But it's, it's like crystals inside. There's a fancier rock. Inside. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> inside like, this rock is another rock. But that rock. <laughs> he's like, nice. "How did you know that?" And it was yeah. just like, so they just spend the day together. Him like, her not, you know, not being able to say anything to mm-hmm. him, but just being fascinated yeah. at the fact that he is also fascinated with discovery and adventure mm-hmm. and so like they're just running through his maps that yeah. he has it was like, a very cute scene of yeah the two it was very cute with them side by side because i think yeah. it really it did show that it obviously she was attracted to him because he was attractive mm-hmm. but there was like they did have a lot in common yeah. and this kind of feeling trapped mm-hmm. where they are yep. um and this desire to explore this desire to get out this desire to be free yep um which you yeah, know which yeah you're right which is great um and so uh, um, his what do we call him his caretaker comes in yeah. and he says you know Eric says he wants to show her around the island mm-hmm. um, and his caretaker says can I have a moment with you and he goes um, well you told us that we need to send all the carriages out to find this mystery girl of yours mm-hmm. and Eric has, is contemplating so he's like shit you're right um, I'm, I'm still looking for her but yeah. he definitely has feelings for mm-hmm. you know Ariel and so um, his caretaker goes because once in his caretaker also, because you, you definitely see this caretaker has taken care of him his entire life. Yeah. And he goes, well, he was like, I mean, I guess we could spare one carriage. Yeah. For you Very much of like, he, the caretaker sees the chemistry yeah, yeah, yeah. and he's just like gently pushing mm-hmm. it along as well. I thought, yeah. I thought that was really cool. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, so yeah. like they, um, they, he lets them sneak off and mm-hmm. you have one of the, the head maids or whatever going like, didn't the queen say he wasn't allowed to leave the castle? He was like, yeah, of course not. Yeah, he was like, "So why are you letting him get in the carriage?" He's like, "What carriage? What carriage? No one left the castle." Right <laughs> and it was, like, it was very much it was just like it's breaking the rules for like for mm. a good cause type for of thing. love. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, Ariel and Eric like start exploring the island. Mm-hmm. Um, they go to a, a market. Like so, they're driving the carriage. He lets her drive. 
um, she like recklessly yep. through the, almost killing small children and <laughs> random animals. Yep. And then they go to a market, mm-hmm. and um, she apparently the original actors from um, the um, who voiced Ariel mm-hmm. was in the market. I believe oh, she was cool. the I believe she was the woman that gave her a flower. God, gotcha. I believe I, I yeah, just yeah. I, I read that she was in it in yeah. the market scene. I just imagine too like. Everyone's just giving because I've been to those like markets like that, mm-hmm. and like everyone's like, "Oh, take this," but it all costs money. That's so what I was so worried like, about. Yeah. So I think Eric's literally just like ten steps behind her, paying. This everyone is why, this is why I hate home. watching animated movies now yeah. because it was like I've lost my childhood. Yeah, wonder. I mean that shit ain't free. And I'm in the real world, like, oh, so you just stealing? Yeah, That's what we doing. You either stealing. They or didn't like, allow, allow Aladdin to do it. Yeah. I don't think they can let you get away well, with it. Because like whenever I've been like anything, it's always Straight like rat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they cut off her hand. They keep it moving. Yeah, because like. Everywhere you go, I'm like, oh, they put it in your hand. Like, oh, isn't that nice? That's nice. You're like, oh, yeah, it is. $200. Fuck. But it's already in your hand, so they don't mm. want it back. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it was a cute little dance scene with them mm-hmm. dancing. And like like I said, I, I already said it, but it was like, Prince Eric is definitely, a, he doesn't, and maybe it's just the kingdom itself. Where yeah. It's just like, that. yeah, there are royals, there are mm-hmm. commoners, but it was just like, it seems like <clears throat> there's no class system yeah. or whatever it is mm-hmm. it was just like everybody kind of just gets along yep yeah, yeah, yeah and so on their ride back um you see uh sebastian flounder and scuttle have been yeah devising a plan to get them to kiss because like we said they can't get ariel because anytime they bring it up to her she's gonna forget it yeah so they have to kind of nudge eric and to kind of like hint at you mm-hmm. know kissing her and so Scuttle steals his hat mm-hmm. and uh, drops it on a boat. Ariel yeah. is fascinated by the boat because once again, everything she's seen up to this point is brand new. Yep. Yeah. And so they get in a rowboat, and this is another, you know, a scene, a iconic scene from yep. the animated movie. Um, and they use the nature to create um, an ambience. Yeah, it's the kiss the girl song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the kiss the girl song. And um, they only changed one thing. And, like they were literally like one line. From what I heard, it I don't know the song mm-hmm. on top of my head. But it was like the at one point in time that like they said something like, "Oh, you gotta ask if she wants to kiss." That's literally like mm-hmm. the only song. Like from what I remember of the song, it was basically word for word except for that one quick line. Mm-hmm. And people were making such a big deal about it. Yeah. And I'm like, well, you know, you probably should make sure <laughs> you probably should make sure the person wants to kiss you before you go in for mm-hmm. the kiss, or like, you know, whatever. But yeah. yes, like. So, of things to change and, like, bitch and moan about, that yeah, wasn't really something weird. That's what I'm saying. Like, a lot of, all of the backlash of this guy, it was just like, bro, you're just, you know. Yeah, exactly. Fanning unnecessary flames. But, um, yeah. but yeah, so, they, you know, get in this moment, like, they're in this, like, this uh, romantic setting, mm-hmm. and they're about to kiss, but here come Floatsam and Jetsam, yep. bumping, like, tipping the, the boat over. Yeah. Oh, and Ariel teaches Eric his, uh, her name. Yes, oh, that was the, cool. That was cool with the scene. So they have the scene where they're, like, laying back and looking at the stars. Oh, he's like, oh, that's Orion. Oh, that's Ares. And uh, he's, like, trying to get her name. And she's like, oh, Ariel points at Ares and, like, stops it. He's like, Ares. And then, blah, 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 blah. That was yeah. really cool. That was fun. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, so they have the scene where about the kiss. They get interrupted by... Hell, I wanted to kiss at this point in time. I'm like, yeah, just mash faces together. Just, you know, just go for it. <laughs> <laughs> and so, they, yeah, they get stopped. And, um, but they go to the... Ca- they go sneak back into the castle. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is where you get another part of the caretaker just being... Yeah. Bit, kind of Lying like, to the queen. Yeah. Like, literally risking his head. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, even he... Not- like you said, he notices this kind of... Um, the chemistry between them mm-hmm. and like this genuine like like this kind of meet cute where they're like they're yeah. having and um so he they send uh, ariel off to bed now that he knows her name mm-hmm. and the caretaker goes um you know we didn't we didn't find um none of the the carts that we the carriages that we sent out found the girl mm-hmm. and even eric's like he forgot about it yeah he's like mm-hmm. totally so he's kind of torn and then he has um this he's like uh sitting on the on the shore yeah kind of thinking because he's having these real feelings for ariel but he's still chasing this yeah. dream girl and like and to the caretaker guy um he says that really cool line. he's like allow an old man to say something mm-hmm. it's something along the lines of don't let what if or what could be get in the way of what, what is, is. Yes. and I was like, that was a great line for mm-hmm. him too yeah he was yeah. great yeah he was a great guy because like like I said it was just like there is you have this person that you like that's here mm-hmm. and you're literally chasing a, a fantasy yeah. for the most part um, and he's you know kind of in his head about it and he's you know sitting on the shore thinking 
And he, he's, uh, you can tell he's decided, oh, I'm going to tell her how I feel. Like he's running back to the castle. But then all of a sudden. But then all of a sudden. So then before this, as this was happening, uh, being that Ursula is using her eels to mm-hmm. kind of spy on the world outside of her lair, being that she's banished. Yeah. Um, when she sees that Ariel almost got this kiss without her voice, because she was like, she thought it was in the bag. She yeah. was like, if this mermaid doesn't have her siren, there's no way she's going to get this kiss. But mm-hmm. she sees that there's genuine attraction between them. She's she just, forgot something very important. Ariel's hot. <laughs> <laughs> you fool! You fool! You fool well! <laughs> and so, so she, um, she decides that she needs to do some trickery herself. So she gets another potion. And that's kind of a funny scene. Where like she's uh, looking for something, yeah, and frustrated she can't find it. She's oh, there it is. There it is. That's gonna. I, I, I didn't like this scene solely because it looked like she wasn't in control of her tentacles. Yes, like the tentacles were. It like was like really Doc Ock. Yeah, and I was like, what? And that, that was so out of place mm-hmm. for me. Where I was like, that's dumb. I yeah. did not like mm-hmm. that. But I mean, the oh, there it is was funny. Yeah. But I didn't want tentacles pulling and like prodding her without her being in control yeah. of them. I was like, what? That's not how octopi work. Yeah, and so she cooks up a potion in order to turn into into a human mm-hmm. being. Yeah. And she has Ariel's voice. Mm-hmm. Um, and so she used that she uses that as as Prince Eric is about to run back to the castle to tell Ariel, you know, that he's you know, he loves her. Yeah. Um, she just shows up on a rock ram. Like, I'm like, oh, fuck, that's oh, no bad, bad. That's a cop. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fucking rat. I mean, ghost. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, so Eric, as he's about to run back to the castle, he hears the mm-hmm. siren that had, wo- had woken him up after he after the shipwreck, and he sees uh, this woman on the rocks. Mm-hmm. And then the next thing, the next morning, you wake up. Oh, and, Ariel wakes up. And you hear the scuttlebutt. And the <laughs> scuttle comes. <laughs> and tells them that Prince... And in song... Yes. The scuttlebutt. You know, the scuttlebutt. I thought it was a pretty catchy, fun song. <laughs> if it wasn't for Aquafina, it would have been Magnifique. <laughs> That's Spanish. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> but so... Um, yeah, so Scuttle sings a song basically saying that Eric uh, is going to propose. Yes. And Ariel is really excited because of the fact, you know, she... She thinks it's her. Yeah. The fool. And so she runs down the stairs and she sees the queen and the caretaker talking to Eric. Mm-hmm. And, but she notices that there's another... There's Some a dark-haired beauty. Dark-haired woman there. Yeah. Whoa, whoa. Beauty. Sorry. So, <laughs> this world. Uh, <laughs> And, um, yeah, so Eric seems to be out of it in a way, but yeah. he, just, he, does, he doesn't really know. So. Well, it's clear, like, there's a spell. And I can't remember in the, mo- in in the yeah, animated yeah, it movie if it was. It did, yeah. Okay, gotcha. I think the problem is they didn't, they should have shown us. Maybe his eyes were, like. Well, they, they did kind of. They showed, like, a little glow in his eyes when he saw her because of, like, the thing on her pendant. Like, there was a quick little glow. Really? On I feel like that. It was brief. Yeah, Maybe it was, it was, it was super so dark. brief. Yes, it was a super such a barely I thought if, moment. I, I wish it was like something purple or something mm-hmm. like in his mm-hmm. eyes to just let you know yeah um, but yeah so he's obviously like he because even he can't explain yeah but he was just like yes this so I'm he's so happy this is amazing yeah so he's yeah. going to um, announce his engagement to the like he's been searching for her yeah uh, for weeks at this point mm-hmm. um, and so Ariel is very upset so like she runs from the castle she feels defeated yeah um, and then Scuttle yep because uh, so they're all looking for Ariel. Like, uh, mm-hmm. was it a flounder, Sebastian, Scuttle looking for Ariel. They can't find her. Scuttle goes back to her room because she, he, she hears mm-hmm. Ariel's voice. Yes, yeah. And she's like, Ariel? And so she goes to a room in the castle and she sees Vanessa, mm-hmm. the dark-haired beauty that um, Thank you. is going to be... <laughs> <laughs> uh, the dark-haired beauty that's going to be engaged to, uh, to Eric. Yeah. And... She's laughing and stuff like that, and then she looks in a mirror, mm-hmm. and Scuttle sees that her reflection is that of Ursula. Yeah, and so seems she, like a terrible spell. And for it's the a record, horrible. Spell. You're gonna have like some shape shifting <laughs> spell, but every time someone sees your reflection, they see who you really are. This is like, have you fun. heard of Plock and Vans? Yeah, like, <laughs> <laughs> I was. I want to say, uh, like, I think. I don't know who the actress was for Veronica. Her Veronica. name is Jessica something. Cool. She did phenomenal. Yeah, I think yeah, she yeah. did she did a such a great job as like this evil, mm-hmm. bewitching, yeah, yeah, alluring yeah. character. In like she only was there for like five, ten minutes mm-hmm. of screen time, and I think she did a great job yeah. with it. So yeah. And so Scuttle rushes back to find the 
actual Ariel mm -hmm. um, to tell her like, oh, the sea witch has, has tricked you. Yep. Um, and Ariel's just defeated. She's just like, I mean, I well, she can't say anything, but she was like, I can't talk. Yeah. Um, he and he's going to marry somebody else, mm -hmm. and then Scuttle tells all of them what Ursula did. So like, oh, we need to stop this engagement. Yeah, and so Ariel runs to the shore. Um, Sebastian tells Flounder to go tell King Triton mm -hmm. what uh, Ursula had done, and then he hops on uh, with uh, Scuttle yeah. to go stop the engagement until yeah. Ariel can get there. I think this was one of the funniest parts of the movie. It, it was. <laughs> I saw it coming, yeah, but, yeah, it, but it, it was. It was so funny. Well, because then it was the after. So, like, while, you know, <laughs> the freak Scuttle's flying with Sebastian, and Sebastian's giving her the plans, like, when I give you the signal, let me go. Uh -huh. And Scuttle's like, okay, and like drops it. <laughs> and then Scuttle's like, I guess I'm on my own. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. It was just like, so we just, so you just, just adapted. You could have <laughs> just dove down and grabbed them. No, no. That is your one yeah. purpose. It was when she was like, I guess I'm on my own. And I was like, that's <laughs> fucking funny. Yeah. And so <laughs> Scuttle um, stops in. So right before, like, at the engagement, the queen gives uh, Eric mm -hmm. a ring from her mother so yep. that he can, you know, propose to uh, Vanessa. Yeah. Um, but before he can do that, Scuttle uh, attacks mm -hmm. attacks him. The ring drops, and this is where you see the caretaker kind of kick it away. Yeah, right. He's like, because eh. he was like, he, even he doesn't. He one he he saw that uh, something different in Eric. Yeah, but he, I think he's also rooting for Eric. Oh, for sure. Well, so, he's like something's up. He Eric, Eric can't even fully explain it because mm -hmm. he takes Eric to the side, and Eric's like, I don't really know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like super. Yeah, like, and out even of he it. was like, look, he was like, where uh, where'd Ariel go? Yeah. And so as they're scrambling looking for the ring, Ariel shows up. Uh, she kind of attacks Vanessa, mm -hmm. and she breaks the necklace, yep. the shell that was uh, holding, like uh, trapping her voice. Mm -hmm. And the her voice uh, goes back into Ariel, so it's now she can talk. Yep. And as soon as she, he hears the her siren um, call, yeah, um, hears her voice in general. Yeah, yeah, her voice in general. He realizes, oh, she's the actual mm -hmm. Ariel is the actual woman that saved me. Yeah, and he kisses her, but it's too late. The sun mm -hmm. is set. Well, she doesn't kiss her. He's about to kiss her. Oh, he was. I thought he, he did. I, I thought he's like about to kiss her, but then she turns back into a mermaid. Because like he's like going in for the kiss, and then she like falls because she doesn't have legs anymore. Maybe, she has a mermaid maybe. Tail. I, maybe it's a bit of both. I, don't I think thought they kissed. Kiss. I don't think notice that they. I don't think she actually kisses. They actually kiss at this point. Oh, okay, that would take away from the big kiss later. Got it. Yeah. So, either way, she was too late. Yeah. Either way, she was too late. Um, yeah. it turns back into a mermaid. The rest of the the wedding, uh, sorry, the engagement party is like kind of terrified. They're like, what the fuck's going on? Because yeah. Ursula turns back into Ursula. <laughs> I'm like, whoa. Well, yeah. So first, Ariel turns and like, holy shit. Then like, they're like, it's a sea creature. Sea creature. Yeah. And then like, uh, Vanessa starts laughing mm -hmm. and she turns back into um, Ursula and yep. just tackles yeah. Ariel off of the cliff. <laughs> yeah. Um, into the water because it was like time's up mm -hmm. you lost yeah yeah and so uh, Eric is just like I gotta go save um, mm -hmm. um, I gotta go save her yeah and so uh, Ursula is dragging uh, Ariel back to her lair mm -hmm. but did she get stopped by King Trident King Trident tries to stop her um, but the whatever spell that, yeah. that um, whatever deal they made mm -hmm. is unbreakable yep because it's blood yeah so like he tries to attack her, but it was, there's a shield around her. I, I think the shield was just because Ursula is also very strong. Too. Oh, okay. I, I was. I don't fully know. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I thought it initially, but then she said, "Oh, the spell is unbreakable." Right. Yeah. Fair. So, so they, it could have been because yeah. of that. I don't know. Yeah. Um. But yeah. So then, um, King Trident is like, "Well, uh, what do you want?" Mm -hmm. And so like, she basically. It's kind of a sibling rivalry type of thing where just like she just hates her brother for like what he has and what she doesn't yeah. for being banished. So she wants to for the being tribe. disfigured as a child and yeah. everyone making fun of her and not letting her play their reindeer. We games. don't know that. Yeah. We did not get that back. I just I said it was canon. I literally said it was canon. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, basically, King Trident gives up the trident. King Triton gives up the trident for mm -hmm. Ariel and yeah. his life. And so they tr they swap. That was weird. In the animated movie, he becomes like one of them little shrimp things. The polyps. Yeah, yeah. little polyp shrimp guys. Yeah. And so but I, didn't we see a bunch of those in, in the well, front of the lair? So in the front of the lair, you see in the beginning of the movie, Ursula eats shrimp. And yes, they're like, yes. E -e -e -e, like eats the shrimp. But it was like, what this thing that attacked her with the eyes? The little eye yeah. thing. Those were just like weird. Okay, because I thought maybe those were after seeing her 
her mm-hmm. lair littered with like mermaid carp, like a uh, uh, skeleton and stuff like that. Yeah. And then all of those monsters. I, I those thought are... that they were all going to turn back into humans after. No, the, those people were all dead. Yeah. yeah. Well, because in the animated, you have those little weird gray misshapen things. Yeah, but they were, were the other. People. Yeah, they those were. Those were the people. other mer people yeah. that she like. And that's why that's what I thought those eyes were. The poor unfortunate souls. Yeah. No, I think those were just creepy plants. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. So then, like, yeah, she kills Triton. Well, like, yeah. So the, uh, her her eels were basically shocking. Um, Ariel, he relents, gives her the trident, yeah, um, and then so they shock him, and he just turns to dust. Which I, I was also like with that, I was like, what? Yeah, I, I didn't get that at all. I was like, and I guess for dramatic effect, but mm-hmm. like, what? That was from getting shocked when yeah. Pink Triton's a bitch. Yeah, <laughs> and so she's about to, I think, attack Ariel, but then this is the funniest scene. Yeah, you talk about scuttle. This is oh, the funniest yeah. scene to me. <laughs> Eric has. Rode out to yeah. where they are in a rowboat. Just in a rowboat, <laughs> dove underwater with a harpoon and just throws it at the, uh, yeah. <laughs> throws it at Ursula. And then as soon as she turns around, he just starts <laughs> running away. <laughs> it was the funniest shit because yeah. it was just, it was basically like. You fight with your siblings, you hit them too hard, and it was like, oh shit. Oh, shit. Okay, yeah. <laughs> but he did not have this planned out. He was like, all right, I'm going to do this harpoon. He was like, Eric, walk me through this step. Yeah, walk walk me through this. What's your plan? You harpoon her. She says, a word? Oh, yeah. And you're like, holy sh... I didn't bring a second. <laughs> yeah, but, mm, awkward. Yeah. But so, like, that distracts her enough. Um, her eels go after him, They and, like, so she's about to use the trident to kill him. Mm-hmm. But Ariel... Yep. Um, kind of pushes her, and yeah. she misfires, and she kills, uh, floats him and jets him. Yep, she's very sad. And so then Ariel helps, uh, what's his name? Uh, Eric get to the surface to get to his boat to get away, mm-hmm. and Ursula is pissed yep. so she uses it to try them to become basically a kraken well no she hits up her boy palpatine and then she's like yo handle my light work we got something to do i did lean over and say somehow palpatine returns. yeah that was on. <laughs> <laughs> so like they get real like star wars here it's disney so they have it was like yeah she had gills on her face yeah she, and it was just like real palpatine yeah. like unlimited power yeah, yeah. <laughs> it looked a lot like that yeah <laughs> but yeah so she's attacking um what's his name uh eric eric yeah and so, and then she's like stirring up the water, bring uh, like bringing up uh, a whirlpool, ship, like yeah, bringing up a whirlpool and bringing up the ships that have been like uh, sunk, sunken yeah. ships. For the record, well, I think we said this before too. How like um, sand, like quicksand, when you're a child, you mm-hmm. think it's going to be a very big issue. I remember being a child. I thought whirlpools <laughs> happened all the time. I was just like, I loved the ocean growing up. I'd always oh, no, swim. I've always hated the no, ocean. I always loved the ocean. I went to the beach all the time as a child. Every time I was in the ocean, I was always on lookout for whirlpools. Though. I was like, it could happen at any time. A whirlpool's going to happen. It just sucked me down. It's how it works. Oh, yeah. But yeah, so her whirlpool. Um, brings up sunken ships. Ariel trying to save Eric mm-hmm. because he's like trapped on this rock. Yeah, um, and she uses it to impale, which is different from the anime. yeah because Eric does it. That's why I thought, which I like that change a lot. Yeah, because that's Ariel's the well, I thought like Ariel's the main character. She's the one that's like the mermaid and having mm-hmm. like the story and the arc here. Yeah. Let her be the one to actually kill her. So I appreciated that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so yeah, so she uses the ship to impale Ursula. Ursula dies. Um, and then she, uh, Ariel has to choose between getting the trident yeah. uh, or saving Eric, and she saves the trident. Yep. She just ditches the fuck out of Eric. She's like, yeah, I'm sure. Whirlpool's still going on. It'll be all right. Whatever. Fuck it. And so she uses the trident. Her her dad, I think, now that Ursula's dead, comes back. Her dad comes back. And this is where I thought all of the other, like, anybody yeah. that was tra- the poor unfortunate soul. Excuse me, that were trapped in her lair were gonna mm-hmm. return. Yeah. See, this was this was also why I didn't like. It's like the man just turned to dust for no reason, then he comes <laughs> back for no reason. I didn't get this. Yeah. And so she acknowledges that he, you know, traded his life for hers, mm-hmm. and then he goes, "Well, you fought to save mine." Yeah. Um, but you still can't. You right. can't well, be no, with him. Well, he didn't say. He says you're here now. That's yeah, all. That yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he's still not thinking about the mm-hmm. fact that like she doesn't want to be here. He's like, yep, you're here, safe. That's all in there. Yeah. yeah. And so then you see uh, Eric um, making it to shore and mm-hmm. saying that he needs to go back to save her. And his mom is like, and then what? 
Because now we know that she's a mermaid, so how is this going to work? Yeah. And she says, our worlds were never meant to be together. Yeah. The, for the, the mom also has, like, character growth, but I was like, why does the mom get character growth? Because <laughs> <laughs> she was like, we have had, we've had nothing, like, literally with all this stuff, the mom's, because we see the, in the beginning, the mom is like, oh, the sea's bad. And mm-hmm. then after all this, I get it. The mom's like, you are you were right all along. Everything is fine, mm-hmm. but we're just different worlds. There's nothing we can do. I was like, that was a surprising amount of character mm-hmm. growth off screen. <laughs> like this. But, you know, it's a movie. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think Eric does succumb to, like, reality, right? Logic. It was just like, yeah. logic. It was just like, why, yeah, how can I be with an actual mermaid? Yeah, because like, I'm a human and she has a tail. Mm-hmm. Like, right? <laughs> and so, like, they kind of both reserve themselves to their fates. Have you seen that episode of Futurama? Sorry, I never yes, said of it. Course. Oh, okay, yeah, like, that's exactly what it comes up. <laughs> I was like, we just found that we loved each other, but we didn't really love each other. Problems in bed. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's how that one went. Yeah. And so um, the next scene we see it was just like a uh, King Trident talking to um, Sebastian, mm-hmm. and it basically him, you know, Sebastian told him all along that you need to let your children be free. <laughs> and that's what I said. That's what yeah. I love the the exchanges between them. He was, oh, is that what you said? Because in, in the beginning of the movie, I don't think we said this. In the beginning of the movie, Sebastian's like, well, you need to be firm with your children and yeah, let yeah. them know what's going on and like look out for them. And then the end, he's like, that's why I always say. It. And he's like, oh, is that what you always say? <laughs> but yeah, so King Trident realizes that he's, you know, his rules are making his daughter miserable, mm-hmm. and he does have the power to give her. He's like. I've given her everything that she could ever want. And Sebastian says, well, not everything. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And so, because as they're doing this, they're watching Ariel. She's on the same rock she was earlier, kind of looking at the castle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, And so, using his magic, uh, he basically gives her, it turns into a human. And so, Eric is doing the same thing where he's just kind of looking out into the ocean in the castle, playing with Max. And um, so, he throws a stick, you know, a stick, right? Yep. Um, and he throws it one time and Max doesn't come back so he's like Max did you lose it? and yeah, he yeah, turns yeah. and Ariel's there mm-hmm. um, and you know it's a nice little reunion they finally kiss yep and shortly after they're getting married mm-hmm. and his mom is saying like yeah with this with this marriage we do see that the, the, our worlds can yeah. you know uh, be as one like they're not as different as us yeah, they, she's yeah. just like yo if you marry a mermaid this is gonna give us a lot of money yeah they could be like we're gonna get a lot of money from this deal I like this you smart boy you smart <laughs> <laughs> and so the 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 people of the island mm-hmm. are you know sending off uh, Ariel and Eric they're gonna explore and try the waters like yeah. they've always wanted Just for the to. record don't mermaids know all the waters if you have like all the seven seas the, the mermaid she's like we're going to uncharted waters you know all what? the ocean Unch- <laughs> you know all of the ocean what are you talking about Ariel and so yeah. as they're rowing away um Eric sees uh, King Triumph. She just pops up. That was like, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> and so he says, hi, Eric. And he says, um, I, hate, I hate the fact that you had to lose your voice for me to hear you. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, I'll always love you. always be here. And then you see, like, the, the, the mer people coming to the surface. But like you said, it, it wasn't um, very established whether it was, like, only his daughters weren't allowed to go to the surface. Yeah. So, like, all mer people weren't. So, and so was- I think this might have been... More impactful if he was. He was just like, if you motherfuckers ever go up there, yeah, like, exactly. It's a whole because like, at the end, like now all the mer people are up there, and yeah. they're like, and it was funny too because as a human, I would have been like, oh shit, <laughs> he was like, oh fuck, oh fuck, oh fuck, yeah. Like, we give, cool, yeah. Give me a harpoon. And I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> he was loading up. The- <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I'm just, I'm, I'm not gonna make the as first move. As soon as they get out of range, <laughs> yeah, but I'm just gonna hold it right. Here. But yeah, it's yeah. supposed to be an important moment. It was like these different worlds are, mm-hmm. you know, colliding, um, and they they are. It's because of you know the the love between uh, Eric and Ariel, and then you see that like um, oh, Trident just pushes them off, yeah. you know, kind of like giving his blessing, but mm-hmm. also you know letting his daughter be her her own person, and then I think. Credits. Credits. Yeah, that's how it ends. Yep. Yeah. So that is The Little Mermaid 2023. So what we always like to do at the end of all of these is just a quick revisit. Did our opinions of the movie change as we were going? So zero to five, Mike, did your opinion change? No. Three. Three. Mm-hmm. Like I said, I, I, I think you're right. It was a little bit funnier. I think V Diggs was, I, I guess I've always liked him, mm-hmm. but it was like he, I think he did a really good job as a kind of that comedic yeah. um, but also the voice of reason and stuff. Well, like Sebastian's like literally one of the most key characters yeah. in this entire movie. So. I think yeah, he did a really good job. It was yeah, there was maybe a few more jokes than I give it credit for. Mm-hmm. I think you're right, Melissa McCarthy. They didn't let her do her thing 
Which is, I, I don't, it's weird because it was like, if you let her ad lib or improv, mm-hmm. she's really good. Yeah. Um, I think where her performance was a little bit weak was her trying to emulate the former performance from the animated. Yeah. And not right. just making it her own. Yeah. Because like right. I said, I was, I don't know if I said it on the on camera or not, but it was just like, there were certain points where she was like, she was loud and then she was whispering. Mm-hmm. And I think that whispering was to be menacing or something yeah. like that. Or just the inflections of what the original actress did. Mm-hmm. It just didn't. It didn't translate that Fair. well. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, other than that, really good. I would definitely say see it. Yeah. So three. Three out of three. five. Yeah. Um, 3.75. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to stick with my three and a half. It's, it was. It was a good movie, and thinking about it, I still think it was very good. I just, literally, the only reason I'm not giving it a four is just because so much of it was a shot-for-shot shot remake. Mm-hmm. If it wasn't such a shot-for-shot shot remake, I would give it a four. Yeah, they would have given Ursula's backstory. I think they should have opened up with a flashback from, with Trident and um, Get, Ursula. I'm getting a little offended. I already gave Ursula's backstory. I just... <laughs> <laughs> If the movie would, oh, 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 if the movie would have given, oh, never mind, I'll yeah. forget. Then that, that gives you that kind of, like you said, it was like now. Cause oftentimes with live action movies or it's a remake or whatever, it was like you need to justify your existence. Yeah. So it was like because we already have because it was like there's always a studio saying it was like it's the. It's telling it for a new generation, but it was like the new generation has DVD players and streaming yeah. services. It was just like what. What are you saying? I think most of the new generation has also already seen this movie. Yeah. yeah so like, it's just like, if you're going to remake something or whatever, whatever it is, you need to justify your existence. Yeah. And oftentimes, it's literally, like we said earlier with like these Disney ones, it's just a shot for shot. Yeah. And people are going to complain about that. And in the Mulan, like mm-hmm. I said, they tried to switch it up and it was like, what the fuck what are you doing? This? So sad. it's just like, yeah. you, you can't win, you can't lose when it comes to these yeah. live action. So it's, yeah, go ahead. 30 years from now, when they do an animated movie of The Little Mermaid Live. <laughs> because nobody's seen it. Because nobody's seen it. That's going to be good. <laughs> no. <laughs> I think they're going to really get a poor and fortunate souls right now. They really are. Yeah, no. Again, no, I mean, it was a really good movie. Like, part of me even feels mixed that I should give it higher than a three and a half. But again, it's a remake. But it was still very good. I highly recommend it. Um, yeah. So that is... The Little Mermaid. Again, thank you so much for listening, everyone. We are the Two Meddling Kids. Uh, if you'd like to reach out to us, you can find us at, at Two Meddling Kids on Twitter, Instagram. If you'd like to email us, uh, Two Meddling Kids at gmail.com. Mike, if they want to reach out to you, how can they? On Instagram at Days from Legendary. Beautiful. And if you'd like to reach out to me, you can find me at, at EdHunt77 on Twitter and Instagram. And I also have a new Instagram, Hunt.comics, for all of my comic related stuff. Again, I'm going to plug it. Kickstarter link will be down there. Evil's Weapon Chainsaw Wars, uh, running the campaign until June 15th. We're about 58%. It's going to be a lot of fun. In Otherwise, et cetera, et cetera, I'll see you next week. Or we'll <laughs> see you next week. Bye, Bye everybody. <laughs>